Our next guests specialize in designing custom scents for luxury brands around the globe. And over the years, they've worked with everyone from Zach Posen and Jason Wu to Rodarte and Prabal Garung. Well, they also happen to be twin sisters. Ooh, double the trouble. <laughs> I like that. Here to talk about their booming business and their glamorous new candle collection is Dawn and Samantha Goldworm. Hi. Welcome, ladies. Ladies, how are you? Oh, so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> So you pioneered something called olfactive branding. What exactly is that? Explain. Yeah, olfactive branding is the idea of translating a brand into a smell. So what we do is we create custom scents. We work across industries, financial services, fashion, art, design, um, hospitality, and really any brand that's trying to communicate their message through smell. Hmm. Through smell. So I know that initially, mm -hmm. years ago, you worked with Bottega Veneta. So does Bottega mm -hmm. Veneta come to you and say, we have a woven handbag, create a smell that'll match this bag? How does it work? Walk us through the process. Well, we worked with the son of the Bottega Veneta family. Mm -hmm. um, Bottega had um, sold itself to the Gucci group years before, and the family wanted to create a new accessories brand, um, an Italian accessories brand. And so 1229 has a proprietary creative process where we take a brand's identity and we translate it into what I like to call an olfactor vision or a smell. So we we take any existing brand references, aesthetics like color or texture or shape, um, any taste references, if it's a restaurant for instance, um, any textures that exist for a handbag company that would be terribly important, mm -hmm. um, or any sound auditories that uh, jingles or sounds that they already have. And we use that information with a variety of other existing brand references and translate it into a smell. Wow, now how long does this process usually work and how many times do you have to go back and forth for like, no, not that smell, no, I want this smell. Well, if the brand has a really strong identity, which the brands that we've worked with have been really kind of strong in their communication, <laughs> um, the process is quite seamless, in fact. It, it does take quite a long time as perfumery doesn't happen overnight, mm -hmm. um, but it's a really interesting process for us and them. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's it. That's private clients, they pay you to custom design scents for fashion shows we mentioned earlier, but weddings, homes, do you sit down with the client and have a conversation? Do you interview them? Do they fill out a questionnaire about things that they hope to evoke, feelings that they hope to evoke? Yes, so I... Without giving away the trade secrets, can you give us... <laughs> I, I understand, proprietary, I got you, girl. But can you just give us a sense of how it works a little? Sure. Um, we speak to the brand beforehand and ask them to pull together any existing references they have. Um, if it's a person for their wedding or if it's a designer for their collection for the season, we ask them to pull together maybe textures or colors from their wedding, textures from the collection, um, any sound. You know, a designer always has a sound they're going to use. Even at a wedding, I think you have your song, your signature song. Um, they pull together all this information and I sit down with them for about an hour and a half. We go through a very extensive list of questions. Okay. Um, and then quite a few months later, uh, we come back with a few different directions, present them, and one of them is essentially what they smell like. It's, I think it's magic. It's magic. magic. I think it's magic. It sounds like magic. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know about the name 1229. Yeah. 1229 um, is our birthday. Oh. We, okay. we spent hours trying to come up with a fantastic name, and one of our really good girlfriends, at, at, after sitting for hours with a lot of our creative girlfriends giving them a lot of wine and having them get all inspired and creative said we should just use 1229 because it's such an important day for us mm. and uh, and what we do is important for our clients. Okay. Well, you also together. have some impressive names of here of Vivid and Wild Beauty. Mm. It was all a dream. That sounds like a Biggie song. <laughs> Where do you all come up with these titles? Some of them are so poetic, like stories or poems. So the candles are all a love affair. It's the different mm. stages of being in love. Not necessarily intimate love, but you know the love that you have in all parts of your life, the passion that you have, your love for your family, your love for your friends, your love for life in general. And so all the names come from kind of little love stories and they're translated into smells, which is essentially the same thing we do for brands. Mm. Because she's such a romantic. <laughs> well, let's talk about your different personalities. Yes. So you're romantic and you are? <laughs> I guess I'm surprised. Kind of romantic. I'm a little more practical, I would say. You're the pragmatic one. Yeah, we okay. say that she lives 
in the clouds uh, most of the time, but she's supposed to. You know, she smells things all day. She's constantly being creatively inspired. So she's supposed to live up there. And I'm you, supposed to handle the day to day. So you're <laughs> the nose of the business. Yes. How did you get into the nose business? I <laughs> fell into it, which I think a lot of people in the industry do. Um, unless your father was a perfumer before you and so on and so forth, a lot of people in my job kind of fall into the love of perfumery. And um, I was uh, fortunate enough that I interned at Avon when I was an undergraduate and the director at Avon asked me to come back uh, a few years later and had my nose tested and surprisingly to both myself and the perfumery school I think I tested well um, because I didn't show any you know uh, prior uh, interest necessarily in perfumery well, what and, uh, and then nose I started test, <laughs> explain that you just smell a bunch of different things do they actually prod your nose what what happens <laughs> they do they they essentially give you ingredients to smell you don't know the ingredients and they know that you don't know the ingredients nor do you know the language there's a whole perfumery language that takes years to learn and so they give you different ingredients they ask you to try to explain them and then they build upon them so they'll give you rose for instance mm. you might know it's rose you say it's floral or it's spicy or it's waxy and then a few blotters which are those long pieces of paper mm -hmm. that they give you mm. they'll give you geranium and you, you won't know what geranium is but you say I smell rose and they said good what else do you smell? And they say, I smell mint. Perfect. And so you're, they're seeing if your olfactive memory can construct new scent memories. Um, wow. And if you can do that and continue to build upon it, then you, you can essentially catalog your memory through smell. And you're able to pull that at, at, at will to either create new olfactive visions or to um, modify a scent to be worn as a perfume or for the home or it's, whatever it's, it may it's be. It's difficult. She's been training me now for, for years. And... You think you know it. You're like, yeah, I got it. And then you say the wrong thing, and then all of a sudden it, you're shaken and you have to start oh, from the beginning because it's not rational. It's completely emotional when mm. you're trying to instinctively smell something and, and tell your trainer what it is. You can have tell. an initial talent, but it's years and years of training. And you yeah. constantly have to continue training. It's not something that you ever stop. It's, it's like exercising your nose. Well, how mm. do you exercise your nose? Are there I workouts? Smell everything. Really? <laughs> really. That can, well, in New York City, everything. that can be a right. good <laughs> thing and that can be a very bad thing. So. That's what she uses the nose plug, right? <laughs> in the summertime. Yes. Yeah, the summer, ooh, on the train. No, you don't yeah. want to be able to smell anything, do you? <laughs> but one of the first things I learned how to do was shut my nose off. Oh. Really? Okay, so yeah, how do you train you do your nose and how do you shut your nose off? <laughs> well, to train your nose, you go to, I went to three different perfumery schools in the end. The first one is to study ingredients. The second was to study genealogy, which is where perfumes come from. Just like fashion, you have like the different decades and how they influence each other throughout the years. Um, and the third is to study um, sourcing and extraction of ingredients around the world. So that when you smell, it's a rose, but yes, it can just be a rose, but... Is it a rose, um, I don't know, distilled from a, a rose in Bulgaria? Is a rose oil extracted from, I don't know, a rose in the south of France? You should be able to tell the difference and how to use them differently in different, um, in different yeah. scents. And of course, it's not just me alone. There's a team of us that do this together that's all been trained uh, for many, many years to be able to bring the to vision together. Wow. Well, now for the two of you, since you're identical twins, do you like and hate the same smells or? <laughs> I'm not allowed. I've learned to like or hate anything. Oh, okay. Well, I'm allowed to like things, just not more than other things. Okay. <laughs> but we're not, you're not allowed to hate anything. You kind of, you smell something um, with an understanding that it, it can build components of different things. So something that you thought you hated before, you know, we started this company could really add something special with all other ingredients in a sense. Hmm. You okay. have to essentially look at smells objectively like colors so that you can use them at your will to create visions for other people. Because at the end of the day, when we translate a brand into an olfactive vision, it's not subjective. It's not about us. It's about the brand. Okay, so you're the nose behind the company and you're the business behind the nose. So how is it working like together that. as twins? <laughs> Do you got, how is it? Does it help that you're twins or does it hurt? I think it helps most of the time. Most of the I time think we're on the same page. Mm -hmm. yeah. It definitely helps. Sometimes you complete each other's sentences? <laughs> we can our, sometimes. Our brother tells us that we do. Sometimes he's like, I don't understand what you're talking about. <laughs> I guess we don't, we don't say that much when we're communicating. So, yeah, I think it's a blessing. You know, we've really been lucky to be able to work together and build this company and kind of be on this ride together, which has been really cool. And over the years, you've worked with a number of celebrities, everyone from the Beckhams to Lady Gaga. Who was the most willing to participate in the process and who seemed to be less inclined to... Uh, to put their nose into it. Well, without giving away any secrets. Oh, come on. Um, give, us, give, give it all away, girl. Yes, Tell yes, us. Yes. Yes. I would say 
My favorite celebrity to work with was probably Kylie Minogue. Really? Yeah. She is so wonderful. She's so charming. She's so effervescent. She's like a jelly bean, and she's so gorgeous. And mm. she's so into the process of perfumery. So she loves talking about it. She loves smelling. She's excited about every um, every component of it: the flacon, the the scent, uh, the box, everything. She's wonderful. Oh, mm. Are there any celebrities that you guys still want to design a scent for? Oh yeah. Who I mean, I have a very one? long list. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> I mean, we don't want to design a scent for them as in design a perfume and put it on the market. I mean, we want to olfactively brand them. We want to translate them into a smell and then use it through, I don't know, something like a candle or scenting yeah. a space or, a or maybe something. Or, or yeah, scenting a concert. We want to do yeah. something that's new and innovative and exciting for them. For who? It's What's celebrity in particular? Concert. That would be cool. What celebrity in particular? And what would their smell be? <laughs> <laughs> Putting you on the spot now. I mean, personally, I would love to send in Julian Jolie. Oh. I just think that she's amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah, she looks like she Incredible. smells good. <laughs> That'd be like that nice mix of feminine and masculine. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah she'd she's be beautiful. very sensual but very strong at the mm -hmm. same time. Absolutely. Okay, what about Lola? She, she smells good it. all the time, but what would you think her scent <laughs> identity would be? Huh. Well, I don't know. We'd have to sit down and explore you and okay. translate you into a smell, okay. which is a very uh, interesting process. Trans Translate me into a smell. I like that. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Shannon. So next time, what, what, do you have any idea? My smell? No? If you I just had to guess, what would you think? I would say you would definitely be kind of fresh, active, mm. okay. with a slight sensuality that's almost covered up. No. Mm. Oh. Interesting. You need to write that yeah, down. I know, right, right. That should be your Twitter. Your, your, your Twitter story. I like that. I like that. It's covered up. So this is your first home offering. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, what's coming up next, ladies? And where can we purchase these beautiful candles and for how much? Okay. You're music now. <laughs> Not without telling us where we can buy these candles. So right now you can buy them on OnlyScentRemains.com. OnlyScentRemains.com. Uh -huh. uh, they okay. will be in retail later this year, but we're not allowed to say who Aww. just yet. Um, but, but it's very exciting. Um, but the website's beautiful, and we use video and imagery to help you figure out, as well as ingredients, to help you figure out which scent works for you. Mm -hmm. um, and this mm -hmm. is the first of our scented objects, so there will be many more to come in uh -huh. the future. Sure. And more. price point? Price point, they're 150 So All worth right. it. But they can be Thank refilled you. also, right? Absolutely, you can yeah. buy the refill. They're Limoges porcelain jars that should be used as scented objects. Oh, and wow. so when they're finished, you can just pop in the refill and you have a brand new candle again. Oh. Ladies, thank you so much for being here. Thank, thank you. Thank you. You smell great. Yeah. <laughs> you smell divine. Thank you so much. And you're watching Arise Entertainment 360.